Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got an unboxing for you. After patiently waiting for delivery from China, I now have this glorious Moonman box to unbox with you. In here, there will be a Moonman T5 pen. So join me now down on the mat. Let's jump on in and take a look at this pen. So welcome down to the mat. Here we've got the box, Mahjong. Design made in China. Just move it up a little bit. I like this here, this pretty patterning. At the bottom, we've got writing instruments. Just gonna turn it around. You know, so other than that, Barco telling us what it is. Nothing really exciting about the box. Let's open this up. So the top comes off. And what's in here? Oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? We can see a pretty pen already. So we've got a manual. There's details there of all sorts of different filling mechanisms. Oh, even some precautions for use. Let's put that to one side. Turn this around. So in the box, we've got some Chinese characters. Underneath that, we've got Mahjong. Feel the temperature of writing. I love that saying. I think it sounds really different, doesn't it? We've got then this pen here in this pen bag. Let's take that out. It doesn't want to come out. Ow. That's a little elasticated band here around the middle. Hard to see because the pen looks so dark. Let's ease that out. I'm just going to then see, is there anything else in the box? Well, I can't get it out, so I'm going to assume not. It just seems like there's some kind of foam padding. Pop that over to one side. Okay, so that leaves us with this pen. Let's ease this out of the wrapper. There we go. I'm fetching my trusty pen stand. Let's just reposition this. There we are. We're now centered to the camera. This pen, it's actually wider than what I expected. A lot of the Chinese pens I get, they seem to be fairly narrow. This one seems to have a bit of width to it. So I hope that's a good sign because I do like wider pens. So slowly turning this round. It's very dark, but it's got this gorgeous purple color in there. I would say the body, it's not actually black. I think it is dark purple. But then look at that as that catches the light as we come around. So pretty to look at. Let's take a quick walk through the body. So the top we've got, I don't want to call it domed, but we've got like a slight point on it. Then there's a very, very rapid coming down until we get to the top of the cap. This looks like it's just a screwed on unit. We come down, we've got the clip. So there's a clip ring going round. The clip itself. Yep, nice and springy. I do love this colour, sorry. <laughs> Let's go up. So we've got a tapering up. Seems to taper all the way until we come to this metal band. The metal band there, Marjon. That's all that's on it. I like the fact it's got this little bit of texture as well. I think that looks quite nice. Bottom of the metal band, we've got a very sharp tapering down to the bottom. It's not a drop off, you can actually feel it taper. The barrel itself looks like it's the same width until we get to about three quarters of the way down. Then it slightly tapers until we come to here, which is another silver colored band. Then we've got this mechanism here. This is a piston filler. So we unscrew this to loosen it off and it doesn't want to move. Ah, it won't do, will it? Because it's a piston. I don't know, Gary, you've been using too many vacuum pens. Anyway, I've screwed that back down for the moment. Let's take the cap off. It takes half, one, one and a half, two, about two and a half turns to come off. That reveals initially, look at this, it's got an ink window. I love that. That means I'm going to be able to see how much ink is left in here. And it's a nice sized ink window as well. Take the cap the rest of the way off to reveal this section. Section, it looks like it's just black to me. It doesn't seem to follow through from the rest of the colour of the body. Well, that's fine. We come down to this gorgeous looking nib. Number six size nib. Let's take a quick closer look at it. This is slightly different to a lot of my Moon Man nibs or Marjon nibs. Depends what they're being called today. If we look down here, it's still engraved with Moon Man, so they haven't changed that. I like the border on it. It's nice and decorative. 
There's a logo under the Moon Man name. I don't recall seeing that either. Then below that, we've got M. This is a medium nib. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know one of my complaints is with a lot of these Chinese pens, you can only get fine or extra fine. It's nice to see some larger nib sizes. So I'm looking forward to using this medium nib. I'm just going to swap over my pen stands. Let's pop this in the middle. I'm doing this so we can do some size comparisons. So we'll start with uncapped. The first pen I'm going to fetch in is a Pilot Metropolitan and also a Lamy Safari. There we go, there's those two pens. So we can see the nib on the Moon Man definitely a lot bigger. It's a number six nib. In terms of length of body, if I line the bottom of the nibs up, we've got the Pilot, definitely shorter. We've got the T5 and then the longest of them is that Lamy. I'm going to post them now. So here we are posted. I've got them all lined up where the nib is. And again, you can see the Pilot Metropolitan, definitely far shorter. And then the Lamy Safari and the T5, roughly the same length. Just going to cap these now. So with the cap on, to my eye, the Metropolitan, slightly shorter, but only a little bit shorter than the T5. Whereas the Safari, yes, yeah, definitely got a size difference there. Going to clear these two off. I'm going to fetch in a couple of other pens. So these pens, when I bought them, they were labelled Moon Man. The first one is the Moon Man M600S. And also I've got the Moon Man M800. I love these pens. I love writing with them. They perform so well. The M600S and the M800, they're cartridge converter pens, whereas the T5, that's a piston filler. Size-wise, the T5, it's definitely the baby of the lot. Let's take the caps off and look at them uncapped. So here they are uncapped. What I've tried to do is line the bottoms of the nibs up. If we look at the nibs, they're all a very similar size, but you can see the iteration of the nibs. So we've got the 600S. The M800, that's actually got a bot nib, but it's a bot nib that you buy with the actual pen. And then we've got that medium nib there on the T5. Let's post them. Posted the M600S. Well, to be honest, I never posted it because it look at that, it looks ugly, it looks unwieldy. Although it feels solid, it's very long. The T5 though sits in between the two when they're posted. So again, it's a nice size. If we look at the sections on these, the M600S, that's a nice wide section. It looks very similar in size to what I'm seeing on the T5. And we've got a different looking section here on the M800. The other two pens have got this lip at the bottom Whereas the M800, it doesn't. It just goes straight down. I'm going to be interested with this lip to see how it goes because I quite often find the lips to be quite uncomfortable and dig into my fingers. I'm now going to step away from the desk. I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to give it a good clean out. When I come back, we'll look at the ink, fill the pen and do a writing sample. So the pen's been cleaned out. Let's take a look at the ink. When I was looking at the pen, I saw all the purple in the body. Let me just fetch that in. Yes, I know it's more pinky in here, but I thought, well, let's try Cult Pen's Little Pip. This is actually made by Diamine, but what we've got there, we've got this gorgeous purple background colour, and we've got quite heavy black, maybe even tending towards goldish type sheen. So I thought, well, that might be quite interesting in this pen. Let's move these out of the way. So here's the bottle, Cult Pen's Little Pip. Let's fetch in Quickie Koala. This is my trusty bottle holder. This is just to try and minimise the chance that Gary being clumsy and knocking ink all over the place. As we can see, it does happen from time to time. The lid quite tightly on there. There we go. So let's fetch in the pen. So I've already moved the mechanism. It's all the way down at the bottom. I'm going to pop the pen in. And then let's fill this ink. So I've tightened it once, I'm going to expel it and then tighten it again, just so we've got the best chance of having a really good fill. Look at that, in that ink window. It looks so dark, doesn't it? It matches the rest of the body so nice. And we'll get rid of this ink. Let's fetch in my trusty paper of testing. This is my black and red notebook and it uses the Oxford Optic Paper. There we go. So time to put the nib onto paper and see what happens. So we have here a Marjon. 
T5. With a medium nib. I'm so excited I've got a medium nibbed Mahjong pen. This cost 27 Australian dollars. Just move this down. I know you could just about see my writing. There we go. The ink, cult pens, little pip. Well, so far, this is looking really nice and feeling nice to write. Let's look at drying times. Immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Still smudging ever so slightly, so for completeness, I'll do one minute. After a minute, well, as we expect, that is nice and dry. I'm going to move the microphone down to the page so you can hear the pen writing. Well, apart from my hand sticking to the paper because I'm a little bit sweaty at the moment, that is really nice. That's really smooth. That That's like one of my more expensive pens. That's how smooth it feels. It's got a little tiny bit of feedback. There's no drag on the paper. It just feels like it's gliding over the paper. But it's not got that feel of, I don't know how best to describe it, like writing on glass or writing on ice. It doesn't have any of that because I personally find that quite, I don't like that. This has got that littlest bit of feedback, not quite pencil-like. The nib doesn't feel overly stiff, it just feels nice to use. I'm going to do one little bit of writing, and that is scribbling. Now, I'm not really a fast writer. That's why I do this. So this is just to show the ink flow keeps up. It keeps going really well, even though I'm scribbling away. Let's pop the pen back in. Let's take a little closer look at the writing. So here we are. Let's look at the grumpy wizards. In there, you've got that gorgeous purple, but there's a lot of that black coming through. So G, R, the P, the R, the D, the M, the A, the K loads of little bits of black which to me is what makes the ink interesting now if we look up here at the little pip this is where i'm saying although i'm saying it looks black when you catch the light it's actually got a bit of a dull sheen in there looks really pretty to use look at this last hash here where it was left for a minute that's full of gold really nice really enjoyable what do i think of this pen well i've got to be honest i think i might be buying the other colors because I love this. Let's take the cap off. It's comfortable to hold. I need to see longer term with this lip down here at the bottom. That's one of the things I need to look at and think about. Is that going to dig into my finger in longer writing sessions? Unposted, it's a perfect fit. So nice. It will post. Seems to be quite secure when it's posted. I wouldn't want to look right like it though, because to me, it feels so heavy at the back. But bear in mind, I normally don't use my pens posted, so most pens feel heavy when I use them. I love the colouring. If I was to complain about the colouring, it's it's more pink than what I remember from the photos. In the photos, I thought this was more of a purple, but when I'm looking at it here, you know, certainly if we can see this a little bit here, that's definitely more pink to my eye. I love this ink window. It's a nice sized ink window. That means it's going to make it nice and easy for me to be able to check how much ink is left. This is one of the things with non-demonstrator pens that I find, especially like the piston fillers. Sometimes you don't know how much ink you've got. And I have been in a number of meetings where you're writing away and the pen runs out of ink. This is going to help to make sure that doesn't happen. For $27, 
I don't think you can beat it for value. I really don't. As I say, there are another three colours in this series, and I think I'm going to have to sweet talk the wife and get permission to buy them because this is such a nice pen to use. And I've got to be honest, I know I'm a bit of a Moon Man or a Marjon fan anyway. I find that most of their pens are nice, but this, I think it's going to even kick the M800 off the top of my like list. It's so nice. So this has been my first impressions of the Marjon T5 and cold pens. Little Pip. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What do you think of this pen? What do you think of the ink choice? I'd love to get your comments down below. What other inks would you suggest it might be worth me trying in here? I've got a number of purple inks, but it's one where I think I'd like to grow my collection. Please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment on a video, just helps to send this content out to other people. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.